training at the Bastyr University. She holds a master's degree in psychology and a degree in chiropractic and is the author of Who Has Read Radical Medicine? Raise your hands. Awesome book. Do you agree? <laughs> Excellent. So we're really looking at changing the paradigms and this is one of our helpers. Dr. Williams. All right, um, that reminds me, I remember this is even sadder, John, in Seattle when I used to practice there, one of my favorite holistic dentists, Rick Stickney, and I shared with each other one day that we actually had fantasies of going to, of, of that jail wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> like you could get your book written. I remember this 25 years ago. You know, so the fact that it even crept in our mind Really, on the underlying thing is the stress and the pressure all of us go through in this, you know, holistic profession. So good for you guys for being such warriors. Okay, so the next um, uh, talk I'm going to give is on uh, the ketone marine sea plasma. I think my first challenge is how to pronounce it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've been saying ketone. Robert just said ketone. And if you've got a southern accent, you say king tom, so whatever. But um, anyway, so this is an amazing nutrient for biological dentists, very essential. Again, I don't receive anything from king tom, uh, the company, uh, to lecture on this. It's just an amazing product. Okay, so I'm going to be talking, first of all, about what not to take, in my opinion, and then later we'll talk about what to take. So Linus Pauling who popularized the use of vitamin C, said a very profound thing. You can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. So he realized, you know, he appreciated the benefits of vitamin C, but he realized the essential nature of minerals in our body. So minerals are essential to health. In fact, the primary role of vitamins is to control how your body absorbs and processes the minerals. That is, vitamins play a supportive role to the minerals in the body. Vitamins are useless without minerals. When your body doesn't have enough vitamins, it can make use of minerals. When your body doesn't have enough minerals, it can't make use of vitamins. Vitamins are literally useless. So to keep the metabolic processes going and your immune system functioning, minerals are essential. Minerals are required to make enzymes, to make amino acids and proteins, hormones, vitamins, enzymes which regulate the nervous system must all function in concert with mineral ions in order to work properly. So, the question is, how do we reestablish a healthy mineral balance in our bodies? Now, minerals are an extremely complex synergy. This is that mineral wheel that shows how if you take too much zinc, you'll deplete your copper and vice versa, and how important a good mineral balance is. So should we take that CalMag product forever and ever? Should we take that combination mineral supplement with six or seven minerals in it? How should we supplement our minerals? Now, it's especially important to us because we know that we need to replete the depleted macro minerals and trace elements in all patients, but especially those who have been damaged by mercury amalgamin. You know, we could go on with 6,000 different ways that mercury affects us. That's on the DAMS uh, website, by the way, and how it depletes minerals in our bodies. Now, do we need mineral supplementation? Do we get enough minerals in our foods and our vitamins? Now, organic farming is a science. These farmers are scientists. They should be. Unfortunately, in the mid-1800s, there was a lot of deforestation, which caused a lot of depletion of the topsoil, of needed minerals and vitamins. So historically, many civilizations have collapsed due to the soil. So we all know how important organic farming is. Now, this is a new slide. Sorry, not in your notes. What does NPK mean? Anybody? Any farmers? Phosphorus, yep, very good. Excellent. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And how does that have an effect with us? Well, very interesting history. This slide isn't in your notes. This Baron von Liebig in the, in the 1840s addressed the British Parliament. 
And he found, he actually developed chlorophyll, very smart scientist beforehand. So this German chemist said NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, was good enough to make your plants grow and to make your products you know, look good in vegetables and fruits and everything. And that's all you needed. You didn't need the trace minerals, the healthy microbes. You didn't need all of those nutrients that were in other types of natural fertilizer, uh, et cetera, that were being used. So in 1855, he published a book called Agricultural Chemistry to that effect. Well, the German chemical industry exploded from that, exploded and in the United States and Europe and worldwide. Chemical fertilizers started coming into use, especially just using these three products, and then later on, of course, lots of petrochemicals, insecticides, pesticides, etc., were added. Now, it's nice, just like Pasteur recanted in his deathbed, to his credit, von Liebig in 1873 felt great remorse. And he said that wasn't good enough. That was a fractionated amount of the minerals that are needed in our soil. I made a mistake. But, but the German, German chemical industry became the largest in the world, and it still is a lot based on this interesting piece of history. By the way, this book, Empty Harvest, it's out of print, but you can still get it on Amazon by Bernard Jensen and Mark Anderson. Fascinating information on minerals and soils and, and our history. I love looking at history because you just see how things were going okay and then how they failed. So we have to supplement. Supplementation is essential. Uh, in the 1936 U.S. Congress, they estimated 99% of Americans are deficient in minerals. 99%. That was 1936. It's a long time ago. So the question is, how to choose the best form of mineral supplementation? What do we do? And I particularly, well, all of us particularly have this problem when we detox mercury amalgam because um, afterwards I had such a hard time finding a good supplement these last 20 years or so as I've been specializing in this. I do an energetic testing technique. It's called matrix reflex testing. It's testing the matrix connective tissue in the body. It's a little more sensitive than most kinesiology testing, even though I do lots of muscle testing still. And I began to find, well, especially the last five years, that lots of products weren't testing well. I additionally have most of my patients on their constitutional homeopathic remedy, according to the new Sankaran system that's in my book. But anyway, it's a fabulous new way of finding the person's exact, precise plant, animal, or mineral remedy to change their life in, in every way. So it's a huge curative technique. So when I get a patient who's cleaned up the obstacles to cure, right, mouth is clean, Scars have been treated, they avoid their major food allergy, they're on the correct constitutional remedy, and I do this very precise testing. I found lots of supplements that weren't testing well. So that was a problem. I didn't know what to put on my five dental days mercury detox protocol. I don't know why I'm stuck with this five, but five days seems to be the main number of days that people get over surgery and mercury amalgam removal. Okay, so, so first of all, I'm going to talk about excipients. What are excipients? Excipients, by definition, are the non-active ingredients in nutritional supplements. On the label, and the labeling laws became very strict in the 1980s and 1990s, you'll see this other ingredients. So, you know, you wonder, why is my woven design so shiny? What is that that makes it so shiny? How natural are these things? <laughs> So, so what, what are the, the function of excipients? They're binders, like in tablets. They're coating agents, like in tablets. They're fillers. Now, remember, we're not talking about all products. Uh, fish oil, they fill up the capsule. That's OK. Herbs, usually they grind up the herb, and it's calorie enough that it goes through the machines all right. So usually herbs aren't in that category. But most supplements do contain these excipients. Lubricants, and the main thing, flow enhancers so that the production machinery will flow at maximum speed to make tablets and capsules. The master excipient, the main one that's used, magnesium stearate. Now you'll see it listed in other ways too. Vegetable stearate, stearic acid, vegetable lubricant. What does stearate do? Stearates coat every particle of the nutrients so that supplements can flow rapidly. What does that, does that do to the absorption? We'll, we'll 
we'll see in a minute. So, so common excipients, mainly magnesium stearate, but also calcium stearate, ascorbyl palmitate, talc, cellulose, silicon dioxide. These are common ones. How are stearates made? <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> see your face. Stearates are made by hydrogenated cotton seed oil. So there's two things wrong here, right? First of all, cottonseed oil. Cotton is very heavily sprayed, so there's a lot of pesticide residues, insecticides, herbicide residues on cottonseed oil. And that gets into the, the final product. What is hydrogenation? Hydroge hydrogenation is forcing hydrogen at very high temperatures into these particular oils, which shouldn't be heated at all, in the presence of a nickel or platinum catalyst over several hours. This results in a solid substance and increased shelf life and the loss of nutritional value of the original oil and toxic trans fatty acids. Okay? So trans fatty acids deform fat molecules. These toxic trans fatty acids have been well, uh, you know, propagated nowadays. People are well aware of these, these toxic fats. They've been linked with cancer, Alzheimer's, especially heart disease, diabetes, obesity, MS. This is what causes heart attacks. All these, you know, chips and, and potato chips and crackers and uh, millions of products in, in a Safeway. You know, it's hard to even walk in Safeway and buy anything that's decent. Trans fats have been linked to at least 30,000 premature deaths in the U.S. So we need to avoid them like the plague. They've also been called false fats and unnatural, dangerous, indigestible plastic. Uh, if anybody could be a sleuth on the internet, we sure would like a picture of margarine. Uh, you can't get it, the industry won't release it, but Sally Fallon and I both would love somebody to get a picture of the gray, greasy margarine that is actually what margarine is before they add the yellow dye and the chemical additives and they bleach it. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, it's just a smelly, greasy, gray thing. And we know that this is the ideology of heart disease in the 20th century, right? Margarine, refined bread, and all that. When did that come in? The early 20th century. And what's, what was the big rule was the economics longer shelf life. So this gave really long shelf life. Now, this is well known that hydrogenated fats are toxic fats, right? New York City's already banned it. California is just passing a law or has passed a law. Denmark trans fats are banned. So more and more people are becoming aware of this, but not so much in our products. Uh, Dietrich, Dietrich has become, become aware of this lately. He was interviewed by Mercola in August, and he believes that magnesium stearate, this chalk-like filler, actually disturbs the gut so much it forms a sludge lining or biofilm defensive barrier in the gut that it creates that. It reduces absorption, some research, pharmaceutical technology. Now this is 1985, so a lot of these research articles you're going to see Maybe a little old. Who's going to pay for research in this? Not many people. See, we don't. Yeah, Monsanto doesn't want you to know that, nor do Tom. So magnesium stearate has been shown to reduce the dissolution of capsules and thus the absorption of nutrients by 65 percent. It coats every mineral or vitamin in that capsule. Of course, it's going to. It's a coating agent. It's going to reduce uh, absorption. There's a nice big bowl of magnesium stearate. Now, up to 5% of the average 500 milligram supplement contains magnesium stearate. If you take eight capsules or tablets a day, that's 250 milligrams a month, or about three ounces a year. And there's a lot of people that take more. There's more, you know, 1,000 milligram uh, supplements are very common, and, and a lot of people even take more than eight a day. So they're getting a lot of this uh, in their bodies, in their diets. Do we have any longitudinal studies on these type of vitamins and minerals ingesting these versus ones without magnesium steroid? Again, no. You know, the NIH doesn't offer us any money for that. But we can look at the uh, information and get a clue that it's not okay. Uh, magnesium steroid or steric acids inhibit T helper cells, impair the cell membrane, reduce cell viability. So they, they're you know, suppressive, significant impact on the immune system. Does it secrete out of the body at all? Excrete at all? It just 
That'd, That'd be, be an, an excellent, excellent question. question. I don't know. You know, I, I guess, guess you, the, the, the question is, does it get excreted out of the body or does it accumulate? Probably both, but probably accumulates in the arterial linings, causing heart attacks, all kinds of things, especially in the gut. That's, Dietrich Klinghardt has been finding more. It's been affecting the gut. That's an excellent question. This would be great research. Yeah. On the previous slide, is that 5% should it be enzymes? No, it is. It, it is. is. Yeah. yeah, good point. Five percent is the binder. Magnesium stearate is the most common. So yeah, most most tablets or capsules contain five percent of magnesium stearate. Cell death, palmitate, ascorbyl palmitate, an isolated fraction of vitamin C, as well as calcium and magnesium stearate, cause cardiac and other types of cells to undergo programmed cell death. American Journal of Medical Science in vitro testing. So let's talk about some examples. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start with the ugly. Okay, there's, there's the ugly. <laughs> it's so sad sometimes that you have to laugh or you'll cry, right? So outrageous. Okay, okay, let's look at a, uh, a, new, um, a vitamin supplement recently prescribed to a patient of mine with mild macular degeneration when she went to an ophthalmologist. She's a hip patient. She called me and said, well, you, well, you take a look at this product. Now, this air is occupied preservation. It contains vitamin A and vitamin C and other things. But look at the label. You've got lactose, which is an allergy. Allergen, you've got povidone, uh, that along with povidone, it's usually used with iodine, it's very allergenic. There you've got magnesium stearate, there you've got magnesium stearate. Polysorbate 80 is um, an allergen and it can cause anaphylaxis. Titanium dioxide, I mean, I have a little titanium in my natural lipstick and blush on, you know, I can handle a little bit of that, but I don't want it. Why ingest it in your product? And there we go, good old Dr. Um, Dr. Feingold. What did he tell us 20 years ago about uh, dyes and food coloring, what it does to our children? Causes all kinds of what he used to call hyperactivity. Now we call it ADD, ADHD, et cetera. Benjamin Feingold, he's now dead, but contains soy, another allergen. So, this is a ridiculous example of uh, toxic labels in conventional vitamin and mineral supplements, which all come from drug companies, by the way. So do ours, most of Okay, so let's look at another conventional uh, company. Anytime you have patients coming in with Costco, Rite Aid, Walgreens, CVS, all these products contain high amounts of those kind of labels, magnesium stearate, all kinds of dyes and colors and flavorings and ridiculous amounts of toxic products. Now again, you may be thinking, okay, this is the other ingredient, it's not the active ingredient, it's, it's just a little bit, but a little bit over time accumulates and we know, we know what um, a, a small amount of homeopathy can do, right? It can be miraculous. So a little bit is a big deal. And every molecule counts, right? And as we get cleaner and healthier, it, we become more aware of them. So I just tell patients that come in with the box full of conventional vitamins, you know, throw them away. I mean, they're doing more harm than good, especially with my testing. They're causing oscillation, weak muscles, and, and everything. Now, I found a better picture than in your notes of the bad. This is a book on mortification. This comes from a book on mortification by a homeopath. Whole book on mortification. you got to love homeopaths, right? So this is the bad. This is disappointing. Not as outrageous, but disappointing. Health food store companies use magnesium steroid. Jaro, Country Life, Nature's Way, now Rainbow Light. A lot of these companies we kind of grew up in. Remember when we all started getting in holistic health? Red Adele Davis, and you went to the health food store, right, John? And I'd go out and get 10 to 20 products and come home and take them. And they didn't do that much, but sometimes they did. And even sadder, our lines, our companies, even most professional lines. Here's Integrative Therapeutics. 
excellent company, Nature Pest uses it a lot. Stearic acid, magnesium stearate, magnesium stearate, that cures soy in. Vegetable glycerin is okay. Some of these things are okay. Silicon dioxide is pretty neutral. But the magnesium stearate, the soy, put that in there. What a shame. So here's a list, not conclusive, not comprehensive. I think I've added some sense to what you have in your notes. But these are the professional lines that I've been adding to my list that use, uh, use magnesium stearate. Now, whenever you tablet, you're going to have to use a binder. And so the general rule we used to say is, when in doubt, buy a capsule, not a tablet, right? Because tablets always have some kind of you know, petrochemical binder to them. Um, but even the capsules, many, many companies, allergy research, biotics, designs for health, others labs, metagenics, of course, professional health products, et cetera. Apex doesn't. Does not. I'll, I'll get, get to that. that. I'll get, get to, to the, the good. <laughs> so, so calcium, calcium stearate. Okay, okay so, so the MSDS on calcium stearate is very similar, similar to magnesium stearate. Potential acute health effects, hazardous in case of eye contact, of ingestion, of inhalation, slightly hazardous in case of skin contact, calcium stearate, potential chronic health effects. Irritating to the lung, mucous membrane, repeated or prolonged exposure to the substance can produce target organ damage. That's from the MSDS. Sadly, even though Roy Lee, in the mid 20th century, one of our dental heroes, was all for making supplements out of foods and natural products, in the 80s and 90s, labeling became, and I'll go ahead and go to this, I don't think you have this slide. In the 80s and 90s, when labeling became very strict, uh, unfortunately, we saw that in standard process, even though it's considered natural, there's a lot of binders and fillers in there. Uh, as you know, Orly was a friend and colleague of Dr. Weston Price. He, he, was, he was attacked viciously by the government over and over. There's a, some research I read on the internet saying, this man is just trying to sell vitamins that just have like wheat, and milk, and sugar, and peas, and, you know. So he was quite a warrior. He was definitely uh, attacked a lot, and he did the best he could. Uh, he died rather young at 72, but his wife lived on to 105, carrying on his work. His first product was Catalan, a vitamin C. But I'm sorry to say that if you look at the other ingredients, and this hasn't been changed, he did add some synthetic isolated nutrients to it. Retinol palmitate, uh, no, excuse me, vitamin A palmitate is a synthetic vitamin A. It's not natural. Ascorbic acid is just the antioxidant shell. As Werner will tell us, Stent Gordy, Stent Bjorgy, who uh, isolated vitamin C in the 1930s, he couldn't cure scurvy with ascorbic acid, right? Only pure vitamin C. So, um, and then of course the calcium stearate. So here's the good products from his land, from the food, but unfortunately, standard process doesn't test well for me either because it's got allergens and toxic binders. Um, pure encapsulations and vitamin nutrients, they use ascorbyl palmitate. Again, it's a fractionated, not whole vitamin C. In fact, Dr. Lee himself said it's the copper and the tyrosine enzyme in vitamin C that makes it so anti-infective. It has that, that wonderful anti-infectious quality. Now you're thinking, well, what about taking tons of doses of vitamin C, you know, that, was, that um, has been popularized so long? Well, it's acidic. So what it is, is it's uh, going into the gut and uh, killing bugs in a certain way makes an effect, but it's still not a, a natural vitamin C, so it's not really a good way to uh, get over a cold after all. So ascorbyl palmitate and pure encapsulations of vitamin nutrients, they test bad for me. It's a fractionated whole part of a vitamin, not the whole. Okay, so here's the good. Right, this is reasonably inert, non-toxic excipient. Silicon dioxide and cellulose Capsules are okay. They're neutral. They're, I wonder why I've used SARM for 30 years, kept going back to it. 
Uh, and they've been the main ones that have come out with the non-allergenic, non-toxic products for years. Bioemersion just added it, um, some silicon dioxide to some of its products. But of course, remember acidophilus, a lot of acidophilus products, they don't have excipients because it's just powder. But he added some vitamins recently. Apex Energetics does not include that. There's also a company called Dr. Ron's and the Synergy Company. They don't have any excipients at all. They just make sure their product fills up the whole capsule. Synergy Company makes the best quality vitamin C, pure radiant C. 120 milligrams in one capsule from berries. That's a lot. Yes, yeah, so, so the, the question, question is, is when, you, when, when it, it says, says pure ascorbic acid, acid can you buffer it with baking soda? soda? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you can, can make those ascorbates, mineral ascorbates, and make it less acidic for the system. But you're still talking about, you know, purely an isolated, fractionated part of the vitamin. Vitamin C has got tyrosinase, it's got copper, it's got bioflavonoids, rutin, estrogen, it's got the ascorbic acid, it's got a whole lot of nutrients in that whole vitamin C. So, so now we looked at the good, those are reasonable companies, and let's look at the gray. Now let's look about, talk about the active ingredients, you know, like how do they get all that vitamin D over here from those New Zealand lambs? Are they using a mortar and pestle and getting it out of the, the, the fur and the skin? Are they using solvents and extracting it? So I like uh, green pasture. Uh, fermented cod liver oil and skate liver oil for my vitamin D supplement. Okay, <clears throat> mineral supplements. So even those supplements, like, like thorn, et cetera, that, that ha have no toxic excipients, um, they still contain inorganic minerals that must be converted by a healthy gut to be absorbed. So they're often not fully assimilated and extruded out, or they remain in congested internal organs. And again, for my mercury detox protocol, I was using a thorn product, and it just wasn't testing well, very well. So I kept looking and looking uh, for a good one. So let's go to uh, the fact that our landlocked bodies are starved, that we come from the sea, and it trace minerals from salt beds on land or inorganic. Sea salt uh, converts back to an inorganic state. So salt is okay, but it's still not, uh, sea salt is good, but it's still not optimum. So what is a great mineral supplement? It's one that is in the proper proportion and calls, call, it contains all the major and minor minerals and trace elements. It's one that is bioavailable and fully assimilable, and it's one that is in an organic form. And this is what we're going to talk about the ketone today, pre-digested by living zooplankton. So right in 2007, when I self-published my first book, wouldn't you know I learned about the ketone product. So it's not, it wasn't in my self-published book, and my new one has caught up with that. And I've been using the ketone since 2007, and it's an amazing supplement company. Okay, why is it logical that seawater plays such a fundamental and indispensable role in our health and healing? So let's talk about evolution. So five billion years ago, actually about four and a half billion years ago, geologists estimate that the Earth was like a volcano. It sounds like hell. It was a hot molten sphere of minerals and elements. It formed magma and lava, covered the Earth, and then about four billion years ago, the Earth was struck with asteroids and meteors of ice. These are catastrophic, catastrophic impact events, they call it. And the Earth came, became an ocean. Water covered the Earth. And this water dissolved the minerals and elements and resulted in an isotonic ocean, right? where you have the same concentration inside the cell as outside the cell. The, the ocean is a lot more saltier today for some reason. don't know why. Okay, and three and a half billion years ago, primordial life began to evolve. They evolved bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae, phytoplankton. About a half billion years later. And then, a half billion years after that, terrestrial life 
began to, began to uh, evolve and move. We began to move on, onto the land. Here we have like amphibians, right, that can actually breathe air and breathe water. And then we moved to lizards and dinosaurs and birds and primates and man. So that's the general um, evolutionary scale. And of course, does not exclude divine consciousness at all, right? God and uh, this divine energy was throughout all that, so we don't need to argue about evolution. So how could we go from the ocean to land? So this terrestrial life, we only succeeded in adapt adapting to life on land by taking our ocean with us. So many of you have seen these charts on the body, they were mostly watery. Type B, right, 60 to 70% by weight. <coughs> so look at the heart there, 79%. It's a pumping chamber, it's a fluid chamber. All of these fluids in our body. Look at the brain, very watery. Look at the liver, too. Look at the liver, is uh, let's say 80%. 86%. When you do, you know, when you're working on a cadaver, on a dry specimen, it doesn't look that fluid. But again, during surgery, which I'm not prone, unfortunately, to, to witness, but it's a lot more watery, a lot more fluid. So all five kingdoms and all 1,800,000 species share this internal ocean. So this would be a rat or a kangaroo or, you know, any animal too tends to have this 60 to 70 percent weight fluidity in their bodies. And it's also important to remember that the earth and our bodies, and that the earth is a macrocosm of our bodies, that the earth is 70 percent water too. Isn't that neat? So we're a microcosm of that macrocosmic ocean. So Rene Quintos made this statement, we are truly a living marine aquarium. So, so who was Rene King Tong? Tong? There's a lot happening at the turn of the 20th century, wasn't there? It's kind of like such an enlightenment period, and then unfortunately we went through the mid-20th century, which was in darkenment, darkenment period with the petrochemicals and the toxic metals and the world wars and all that, and now, you know, we're trying very hard to remember this history. So like Béchamp, he grew up very influenced by his predecessor, Claude Bernard, and again, and again, we know, we know that um, <coughs> on Pasteur's deathbed, he said Bernard was right, the pathogen is nothing, the terrain is everything. Uh, I don't think you, do you oh, yeah. this is new. This website here, this is Michael Schmidt's website, and it gives further proof that Louis Pasteur really did say this. There was some uh, uncertainty about Hume uh, attesting to the fact that. Pastor said that. And, and I just, just want to say, say something, something about Michael Schmidt. Who's a Weston A. Price member here? Yay! Well, Michael Schmidt is one of our organic farmers, just wrote a book, Amazing Hero. He is on a hunger strike this week. I mean, he's been on a hunger strike in favor of this, the government not putting in jail raw organic dairy farmers, and other dairy farmers are um, joining him. So I just wanted to throw that out. And, that our big conference is in Dallas in November. I certainly hope he makes it until then. But you can see how you know how important and how strong these that, that this is uh, coming up as an issue when organic farmers in Canada and America are beginning to go on a hunger strike in this day and age because they're they've been imprisoned and harassed by the government for trying to give or sell raw organic dairy to their customers who want it very much. So again, so again, Michael Schmidt, his, his website, good information. So, so Rene Kinkong reasoned, reasoned that since life evolved in the marine environment, that our health was contingent on maintaining this ocean, oceanic internal milieu. So where did he extract the water? These are, this is a picture of phytoplankton blooms. I never, never heard of this in my life, life. and again, again, the King Tong people, people gave you lots of literature, because this is a little known subject, but there's, there's like six or seven of these huge plankton blooms in the world's oceans, and in them, there's a whole chemistry going on. They're vortex-shaped. See right here, you can see the, uh, the vortex whirlpool-type shape to them. 
and they're huge, huge, huge areas. They stretch hundreds of miles across. Who knew? Here's another picture. Huge area. So off the coast of Europe, not the coast, but a little more, not directly off the coast, but further in, there was one of these phytoplankton bloom, blooms. And Rene Quinton started extracting the water from it. And what, if, what the phytoplankton is here in this vortex, and then it stirs up nutrients from the bottom and zooplankton that feed on fish eggs. And a lot of precious minerals and nutrients and microbes microbes see the growth of this phytoplankton. So Quinton extracted this water in 1897, long time ago, and he called it marine sea plasma since it was so similar to our blood. He also uh, has many patents, a very bright scientist. He, he uh, originated the idea of the law of marine constancy, that blood contained the same minerals as the ocean, water in a similar proportion. I'll show a picture of that in a minute. But he harvested this 100 feet down and he patented a unique process to harvest the water in these plankton blooms. And then he cold processed, no heat, no radiation to this very day, and then packaged it in the, the, the product in glass vials. To this very day, the company does not use plastic. It's recognized as a pharmaceutical for over 80 years, now, the King Kong Company, high integrity, this company, they took their product, if I'm saying this right, historically, off the um, French pharmacopoeia as an injectable in the 80s, because in the 80s, something changed about injectables. And what that was, in order to keep your injectables pyrogen free, bacteria free, all over the world, uh, companies and countries started making people heat their injectables. Heat them. You don't have to heat them when they're in one, you know, little little bias. But nevertheless, that became a very calm thing to do to injectables. Now, if you talk to any pharmacist, people say to keep a pyrogen-free lab is easy. You just have to maintain normal hygiene, you know, in your laboratory. But you know, there's there's companies that are lax on that and, and toxic. Anyway, so, so it's, it's not any longer as an injectable because of that uh, particular ruling that you have to heat the product and they wouldn't heat it. But it's still very available as an oral vial. So you're all wondering about the mercury content, right? Well, amazingly, these massive phytoplankton blooms, hundreds of miles wide, bigger than all of the plants and vegetation on the earth, you know, on land, amazing to think about, contain more green phytoplankton than all trees, shrubs, and grasses on land combined. Amazing. They act as this incredible purification factory. And inside the seawater is, is quite uh, pristine. The mercury level is either zero or 0 0.005 milligrams per liter. It's below the undetectable levels labs use for safe drinking water or not even, a, not even there at all. So the company can give you these certificate of analysis that amazingly these, uh, these blooms keep the, uh, the, the nutrients and the water so pure and pristine. Whales travel thousands of miles to swim in these phytoplankton blooms. And uh, these trillions of phytoplankton give rise to zooplankton, uh, leaving behind a fluid of bioactive minerals, amino acids, RNA, antioxidants, polysaccharides, fatty acids. This is called biosynosis. We're going to talk about this more in a minute. But the point is, this is a heck of a lot more than seawater. This is an amazing nutritional supplement. Whales don't age. At all, I mean, they, they live to like, they can live to 100 or over 100. Recently in Alaska, they killed a whale and they found a harpoon in it from 1890. Around that time, that whale had been around that long. Incredible. Sea turtles never start, stop growing. They've survived for more than 200 million years and they can live to, to be 80 years of age or more. And interesting, there's a real, really a startling absence of disease in the sea. Very healthy environment. So, so biosynosis, uh, if you Google this, you still don't understand it because <laughs> there's not much on it. 
So, so biostenosis describes a marine biological activity which takes place in a massive phytoplankton bloom at the interface of the plant plankton and the animal plankton. The bloom consists primarily of hundreds of species of plant phytoplankton which exist in the top 100 feet from the surface and hundreds of species of the animal zooplankton below. At the interface, the zooplankton feed on the phytoplankton and a factory of exotic biochemistry is created. Is this not on your notes? This may not be in your notes, sorry. Oh, well, 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 no, no you, you can get, get it from, from this, this the company, company on biosynosis. But, but what, um, so, so basically, uh, what's, what's happening is this phytoplankton is uh, being eaten by the zooplankton below and creating this amazing soup, this nutrient of life in the middle. So just to finish this, again, you don't have to write this down, but to get an understanding of these minerals, these minerals are organocomplexed in varieties undefined by science. There's no other nutrient like this. One also finds in this primordial like soup, again, vitamins, enzymes, bicarbonate buffers, polypeptides, RNA DNA, hyaluronic acid, such an important aspect of our matrix tissue, uh, creates collagen, fatty acids, carotenoids, organic acids, natural antibiotics, antifungals, and telomere mediators to protect our genetic DNA sequences. So, again, it's much more than seawater, and it's through this process of biosynosis, which is understood a lot more in France than it is here. Okay, as we said, <coughs> the law of marine constancy, René Quinton uh, made that particular law because the Quinton isotonic you can see has this almost exact similar ratio of minerals as the uh, extracted marine plasma. There were only 15 minerals that were measurable in the 1900s. 15. Now we have a periodic table of 92 and more, right? But you can see how very similar bicarb, phosphorus, calcium, etc. And in early, the early 20th century, in World War I, King Tong and his colleagues, Jean Jericho, saved many wounded soldiers' life, literally transfusing, uh, using it as a blood replacement, blood plasma replacement for transfusion for wounded soldiers. Yeah, yeah, got, got two, two types. types. We'll, we'll get, get to that. that. There's, There's an isotonic, isotonic and hypertonic. There are two, two types to choose from. And, and, but the isotonic, isotonic was the one that was used as a blood replacement because that's, that's most isotonic, isotonic tonic, similar to our blood. blood. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to use the hypertonic. Too salty. Is that the uh, deteriorate over a period of time that's not refrigerated? Does, Does not deteriorate. These products don't deteriorate. deteriorate. They have a huge shelf life. life. Again, each one is packaged in a glass vial. So, so you don't have to refrigerate it at all. Are there living things in there or just uh... well, well, there's, there's this, it's, 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 it's all filtered. So you're getting the information and the nutrients, but there's, there's no, no more zooplankton or phytoplankton. So, so it's all filtered and clean and, and, and watery, but, but you're getting all the information and all the nutrients from it. But it's filtered without radiation, without heat, without toxic chemicals. Yeah. I saw that it also comes in larger yeah. 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 So the question is, it also comes in a larger plastic bottle, and I will say this: that there are two companies competing. This the company I'm talking about is Original Keton, and there's another company. And I personally have tested out that other company, and it doesn't test as well. That other company, if you call that president, he will say yes, he heats the product. And we can see what a precious nutrient that, that is and how disturbing that is to the uh, final product. So I'm talking about original keto, not the other company. What are they called? The other company? The company? I forgot. Uh, keto something. Keto something. They have the same name. They, they do. do. Okay. They, they do. do. It's, it's very tricky, tricky but, but you, you want to go to originalketone.com. And they're here and they can help you, you know, with that. Yeah. Yes, how is the nuclear radiation meltdown? 
Yeah, yeah I, I got, got that, that question about, about the nuclear, nuclear radiation from Japan recently, how that's, that's affecting the ocean. ocean. It, it seems to have no effect on this area in the Atlantic when they're in this phytoplankton whirlpool purification factory. There's no problem with that, so you don't have to worry about that. Good question. Okay, so also, not only does the uh, ketone isotonic fluid uh, is similar to our blood, but it's also very similar to our extracellular fluid, okay, to our matrix connective tissue in our body. So again, same picture, look at the similar, similar bicarb, potassium, sulfur, chlorine, carbon, magnesium, etc. ratio. So what we're doing is feeding our connective tissue which is so important to our health. Again, it really fits with me with my matrix reflex testing because I find patients doing so much better on this product. So Alfred Bissinger, as you know, the famous Austrian researcher and physician in 1945, he began lab research into the matrix tissue. And he also talked about seawater. He said original seawater is the oldest system of communication between living cells original seawater. Of course, he also said that the system of communication between living cells comes through the matrix tissue, through the extracellular fluid, that neurons and, 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 uh, and uh, blood do not directly innervate the cell membrane, that it's the connective tissue, the matrix tissue, the fluid medium that uh, that uh, carries uh, neurological stimuli, neurotransmitters, and even blood nutrients, brings it into the cell, and then helps detox what's needed to be detoxified out of the cell. Okay, so at the 1900 World's Fair, these guys were real cowboys, weren't they? They were wild. He don't found the stray dog. I know, I know. But it's, it's good. good. It's good. good. <laughs> he had a lot of dog studies. And, and he brought it into the World's Fair and he took out 99% of that dog's blood. 99%. And then he replaced it with the ketone. And for a few minutes or however long, the dog just lay there. And then he jumped up and ran around and went over to the seating bowl. And it was an excellent health. And they did this over and over again, showing how important this ketone is, is for our blood and to our matrix extracellular fluid. Uh, epigenetics, uh, Randy Jurl of Duke University has recently, you know, that, that term was coined because he found that certain genes of laboratory mice could be turned off by the addition of extra nu nutrients in the diet. Folate, folate can make a big difference in uh, birth issues, of course, and, 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 and babies born to mothers. Um, making them healthier. But epigenetics has been proven many times in holistic health. In 1900, this is an amazing study. 2,000 mothers who had a long history of bearing children with congenital defects, birth defects, serious disease, were administered ketone marine plasma during pregnancy, and their subsequent offspring were nearly 100% free. Amazing. So the ketone is very important pre and post-pregnancy, during nursing, et cetera. And then Jean Jericho, there's who speak French. Little Spencer Marin, also a ketone wrote a book too, but it's in French. Company doesn't translate it in English. I always find it's funny that these, even though this, this product is sold in America, that these European countries put so much into their research and development, not, 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 not as much into advertising, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas, whereas America, America unfortunately, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, so, <laughs> so much in the advertising, but not into the research and development. But anyway, the ketone babies, as they were called, were tracked for as long as 15 years to prove the long-term efficacy of the ketone. Uh, the family also funded 69 free clinics in the 20th century. Early 20th century. Uh, these clinics were throughout Europe to help dispense ketone to those in need. Uh, hygiene is 50% of the problem, right? Flush toilets and running water became prevalent in the 1930s, 1940s. And, you know, can you imagine not taking a bath for months? Or I mean, you know, our bathrooms, our running water, our toilets, they're amazing. But, you know, the, the, the hygiene is, is huge. 
and of course, of course hygiene, hygiene grew you know stronger and, and, and more, more people, people had uh, modern, modern toilets, toilets in their houses in the, in the 1950s, 1950s and that's, and that's right when vaccines were being popularized, popularized and, and so they grabbed that and said oh look at all these great, great vaccines, vaccines and what they're doing and really it was, it was so much the rise of good sanitation so, so there, there was, was a lot, lot of epidemics in Europe, typhoid, scarlet fever, cholera, etc. And, and here you have pictures of infants near death, death that look like Auschwitz victims, right? And, and then, then within, within a month or two with the ketone, ketone completely healthy, healthy vibrant, vibrant, skin and bones, literally dying, and, and then thriving. thriving. So there's a lot of research on the website on this. So indications for use, everything. Uh, Jean Jericho said, said marine plasma, plasma is, is not a serum against such and such, and such but it's designed for the living cells. So, so anybody who wants healthier blood or extra healthier, healthier extracellular uh, matrix tissue needs, needs the king all, all my patients are on the product, and it's not tested. It, it, it doesn't stop testing. You know, a lot of products you take it for six months, one year, you don't need it anymore. This continues to be an important nutrient for everyone. Absorption. Yeah, absorption, absorption is fantastic. Is fantastic. We're, we're coming to that. Yeah, yeah, absorption into, into the oral cavity, cavity fantastic. Right into the cell wall. I have a slide on that. So let's look at some of these doctors. This is Dr. Friedman, professor of osteopathic medicine. Until I had the continuum marine plasma, I never found a substance that stimulated the human tidal body the same as an osteopathic treatment. So, so the, the British, British osteopaths that I learned from call this a long tide. It's slowing down at the cranial rhythm. They actually learned this from a, a Dallas uh, osteopath, Roland Becker, who was an amazing teacher. But um, I do the same thing with the ketone marine plasma or the right constitutional homeopathic remedy. As you're feeling the cranial sacral rhythm, you'll find this long tide, I meaning you'll start going into flexion and then you'll just be expanding, 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 and slower and slower and slower. And you'll move from like 8 to 12 times a minute, the cranial rhythm, to like 3 to 4 times a minute. And just like slow breathing, it's a good sign. It's a good sign when you see that. Athletes. Here's the Olympic athlete. Uh, I tell patients, uh, the world's greatest athletes use this to uh, deliver speed, strength, and endurance. I always tell patients, take an extra vial if you overdid it. You know, you exercise too hard, you come home, you know you're going to be sore. Take an extra vial or two, you won't get sore. You need to replenish those nutrients. Here's Roy Didman. Uh, he's, he's in, in Santa, Santa Monica, California, California, I believe, Southern, Southern California. California. He, he is, is the expert, one of the top uh, physician experts in this country on ketones. ketones. So, so if you go, go to the website, you'll see tons of studies uh, and, and tons, tons of articles from Roy. Roy. He's, he's just, just a great, great guy, and he's, um, he he's, uh, specializes in children, children and women's health. health. And he, he says, all three of my sons are getting straight A's and excelling in sports. So, so he, he is, is the leading expert, expert on ketone. ketone. I, I wish he could be here. Dental. Nicholas Sterling in Switzerland is uh, kind, kind of the, the uh, most renowned, holistic biological dentist, dentist in the world who's, who's been, been using ketone. ketone. He, he concluded that ketone, ketone is one of the best products available to maintain healthy teeth and gums. So, so again, again, like we said, you're not taking a... Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, okay, sorry. Nicholas, Nicholas Stelling, Stelling, not Sterling. Sorry, sorry. Nicholas Stelling, S T E. Yeah, he's still practicing, yeah, he's still practicing, practicing in Switzerland. Switzerland. Yep. Yeah. Speaks, Speaks French. Stelling, Stelling not, not Sterling. Sterling. Thank, thank you. you. Nicholas Stelling. S T E L L I N G. So, so again, again, instead, instead of, of taking, taking a, a bottle of six products or seven products or 12 minerals put together in a capsule or tablet with possible or probable toxic excipients, here you've got all 92 minerals and more from the periodic table. You've got the whole ocean. You've got the whole periodic table that you're receiving, not just calcium or magnesium, phosphorus, etc. So Dr. Selling. Suggest. Suggest. Now, now this, this is an important, important slide for you guys, and I didn't clean it up, so circle it. 
because there were some of these things I wasn't sure if the translation was exactly right, like this washing of the radical canals. I guess that's the radicular root canals when you're doing a root canal. Okay. So um, he uses it for neural therapy. You can inject over there. Um, Mouth washes, washing solution for bone polishes. What are bone polishes? Habitation surgery? I suppose. I'm not sure. sure. Or maybe that's just clean. I'm not sure. So support. Yeah. Support healthy gums. Anyway, oh, there it is. Dr. Spelling, correct? Uh, Spelling in Switzerland has been using this for yeah, root canal washing after endodontics. Periodontal disease, healthy gums, he uses it in mouthwash, filling of the dry alveolus. That's true now. No, that's a dry socket. Oh, that's a dry socket. Ah, okay. Wow. I'd like to see if that helped with a dry socket. I haven't had experience with that. I mean, I don't get dry socket anymore because I surround the dragon with my five surgical lips. But Used to. All right. So, uh, five, my five dental detox, detox protocol, protocol days. Again, this comes from Nylander and Magnuson and other Swedish researchers in 1991 that put implanted a mercury filling in an 11 year old child's mouth and then took it out and found that the five days, especially the third day after removal, was the highest amount of mercury excretion. They, they further found that most of the excretion came, came through the gut, as we know now, not through the urine, the, the kidney, kidney bladder, so that 80% comes through the gut. So it's very important to, um, when you take mercury out, in the same way, to detox acutely rather than chronically, right? So we've got mercury fillings in our mouth, we've got chronic toxicity, and then when we remove a quadrant at a time, if, if we surround, surround the dragon, dragon, if we treat that intoxication acutely for five days, it's, it's appropriate to the stress, the sensitive patient doesn't get sick, and they handle the detox much better. And, uh, I just send them home with the protocol, and they rarely have to come back into my office. So it includes colonics if necessary, it includes doubling the dose which we'll talk about. So if they're taking one vial a day of the ketone, they take two to three vials a day during these five dental days. And after that, they have detoxified reasonably. They continue on the products. But you hit the fire with fire, right, when you're removing it. So this is the five dental detox days. I'm going to put it on my website in a couple of weeks. I just had to add, make one addition if you want to see that. Yeah. Well, as you know, the fecal material test. test. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the question, question is, would that, if 80 percent of mercury is excreted through the gut, would the fecal uh, excretion uh, test be the most accurate? Well, as you know, without a um, without a provocation like DMPS, DMPS, uh, etc. The body will hold on to these toxic metals so much and you won't get the positive test. You know, we all know that they've been doing tests for years is that the sickest patients look the best, right? Because they're not excreters. And the, and the healthier patients that are excreting look better. So you still run into that situation. But yeah, a lot of people are using the fecal over the urine test, at least if they provoke the patient. I don't use DPS and DMSA anymore, though. I just find it depleting the minerals too much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the question is, um, okay, so your question is, during those five dental detox days, when I'm telling the patient, double the dose of products, is that strong dosage too, too much to get any excretion from the other mercury fillings that are still in the mouth because you can't take out all four quadrants at, at the same time, or at least I haven't found that to be a good idea. No, no. My five dental detox days, I've been doing it for over a decade, and it just works really well. Yeah, it just works on the body. The body is feeling it. The body receives those nutrients and detox as well. So, yeah, good question. 
Okay, okay, dental focal infections, infections, we talked about gingivitis, periodontitis, Dr. Snelling is using this like crazy, reduces inflammation and infection, remineralizes gum tea, jaw tissue, normalizes the oral terrain. I have patients uh, gargle and uh, you know, take this orally all the time for uh, any kind of gum uh, disease. Again, Again, like, like I, I said, said, I have this five post-cavitation post surgery days. Some dentists say you'll be, wet, you'll be pretty well in three days or, or so. I find that you know, sometimes, sometimes the fourth and fifth day are really tricky. So to avoid dry socket, I really try to get the patient to stay home and relax for five days post-cavitation surgery. So King Kong is indispensable for my five post-cavitation surgery days. And you guys, you guys in the, using, using it in the dental chair, chair and they start, start wanting to do what Dr. Stelling does and using it at the time of surgery. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so the, the question, question is, does the biofilm in the, the mouth, does the king tone go through that? that? The king tone uh, normalizes, normalizes the oral terrain. terrain. As, as far as, as its killing, killing factor of bacteria and other toxins, I would use other supplements as well to, to detoxify the pathogenic bacteria in the mouth and, and, and as well as the ketone. Well, I'm getting to that. <laughs> okay. So, again, same thing with the uh, post-mercury detox, post-surgery detox, too. I double the dose of ketone supplementation. They're taking one or two vials a day. They take two to four a day. And it really helps uh, incredibly uh, put that uh, nutritional supplementation into the gums and the teeth and the bone. Very well absorbed. Very important after dental cavitation surgery. There's, There's the Ipsy lateral, lateral rule I talked about, about this morning. morning. Patient, patient comes, comes in with a chronic number 18, 18 dental, dental focus, chronic, chronic left hip pain, pain treat, treat the tooth, treat the tooth, treat the tooth. Treat the tooth. And, and at some, some point, point, if you, you have, have to uh, uh, sacrifice that, that tooth, do it properly with proper cavitation surgery, and then watch that left hip pain melt away. Ipsy lateral rule. Malocclusions. Here's, Here's Dr. Dr. Price's dramatic, dramatic expansion of the Down, down, shot, down syndrome shot. Let everybody know this research. In six months, he moved. He expanded this child two inches. Two inches in six months. These guys weren't timid, were they? So, uh, but this 16-year-old uh, boy went from a four-year-old IQ playing with blocks to ride a trolley, making, uh, going, going to the grocery, grocery store, store, making change, reading the headlines in the paper. So it was amazing. Without, Without anything else, else but just expansion. expansion. His parents were invalids and didn't have any behavioral, behavioral education, education, anything like that. But just the expansion. So those of you nowadays that are using good quality expansion appliances, Prozess, Homeoblock, Bioblock, even Invisalign, you need to supplement, supplement the minerals to this job while you're doing this major, you know, major change, major remodeling to the mouth. Very important for orthopedic uh, treatment, too. So, so loads, loads of treatment, treatment oral. oral. Most, Most of the time, you just take these, these, um, these uh, vials orally. You're, You're supposed, supposed to hold it in your mouth as long as you can, at least for a minute. It's very important for the amylase enzyme to tag those nutrients, nutrients tell, tell the brain and the body what's, what's coming down. So, so many things, things are good to be held in the mouth nutritionally uh, before, before, before taking them. them. Uh, then, then the body, body really receives it, it, utilizes it, and assimilates it better. Uh, sinus, sinus rinse, you can, rinse, you can, you you can rinse, rinse your sinuses or snort up nasally. Often in a patient with chronic sinus infection, I say, take your oral vial, then you'll have a few little drops left. Snorting up nasally really helps you know, improve the biological terrain, that chronically inflamed sinus terrain. You can, you can spray, spray it in the, in the eyes. eyes. I actually, actually haven't tried, tried that, that yet. yet. You, you can, can use, use it as a nebulizer. I've, I've used, used it on some patients that used to smoke where I was testing cadmium in the lungs. Or I had one gal who's real healthy, healthy now, but man, she, she had, had a history of severe drugs, drug use. use. Uh, I can't I remember, but freebasing and all that stuff. Anyway, so her lungs were really damaged, and she used the 
ketone as an, an nebulizer that's used a lot, goes right into the lungs, excellent for restoring lung and pulmonary function. Rectally, a lot of colonic therapists use this as an implant before colonic therapy or after colonic therapy, implanting good microorganisms. Vaginally, good for uh, vaginal infections. And Dr. Dittman, like I said, in Southern California, he's a real expert on ketone. He, he uh, works on women's health a lot and is uh, very expert in that. Injection is not legal in the States. Injection is not legal. They do it in Europe, but sub they do a lot of IV, IV, sub Q, yeah, but we, we the isotonic. You only want to inject if you're in Europe the isotonic, because that's the, the normal, you know, saline uh, solution that is in any injectable blood. Isotonic. It's, it's up, up to you what you want to do in the office, but it's, it's not, not legal. legal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. A, a sinus, sinus focus, focus again, again, the Ipsy lateral, lateral rule. Patients, patients say, you know, I have a, a chronic right sided. If it's, it's really one sided, what's, what's the first, first thing you think about? A tooth on the right side, especially the maxillary tooth. Most of the time, not most of the time, but a significant percentage of the time, this chronic sinus sided is secondary to a maxillary focal infection. Chronic. Chronic, chronic silent insidious, insidious infection. So, so make sure the teeth are clean if, if they, they aren't clean them up. up. But again, uh, it's, it's, it's very excellent to use the ketone to restore, to restore the nasal and sinus terrain afterwards. Um, I, already I already talked about, about this, this, you know, the oral, oral dosage. dosage. I usually dose patients, patients at one by one, one to two times a day. The hypertonic is more the sympathetic nerve supportive. More, more concentrated, concentrated salty, salty solution. solution. So, so if you're going to be taking, taking both, both, which many people do, you want to take the hypertonic in the morning and the isotonic at night. The isotonic is more uh, supportive and um, restorative, restorative for the parasympathetic nervous system. system. Most, most of my, my patients take the isotonic. That's say about I, most patients, patients like 75 percent on the isotonic, 25 percent on the hypertonic. I'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Again, Again, hold in your mouth as long as you can so the body really receives these nutrients. Bioavailability is fantastic. There's absorption through passive diffusion across the cell membranes, uh, very well absorbed in the oral mucosa and as well as in the intestinal tract. It's important to remember the probiotic support of these ketone uh, marine sea plasma, not just minerals, but also probiotics in there. A lot, a lot of people, people in France, France or Europe, I hear, take it before a meal. Very good before a meal uh, as a digestive. So the minerals easily pass through the cell membrane. Well, why should they? Because it's part of our internal ocean. It's natural, it's clean, there's no synthetic excipients. And through uh, passive transport, it easily goes into the cells, as well as into the extracellular fluid and in blood. So, so, isotonic or hypertonic? As, as I said before, the isotonic supports the parasympathetic nervous system. It's used for children three and under, the elderly, and the more sensitive. I usually start people with isotonic. The hypertonic supports the sympathetic nervous system more for athletes, improves endurance, and for intense mental activity. Now, there is a contra, a soft contra indication with hypertonic is that it's not indicated for hypertension or significant anxiety. Now, we all know that, you know, hypertension isn't caused by salt. You know, it's usually caused by an imbalance of minerals. So I actually haven't found this to be true. I did prescribe hypertonic to one uh, patient with anxiety one time, and there he did feel more anxious. So I've been, I've been more careful with hypertension and anxiety, even though I hardly ever see it. So in general, the isotonic is the best and the easiest, and there's no side effects at all that I know of. So there's no problem prescribing that. On, On the, the other, other hand, hand hypertonic, hypertonic is excellent for athletes. Hypertonic, hypertonic is excellent for people like me with low blood pressure all their life. 90 over 60, 80 over 50. <laughs> and, and past, past history of a lot of fatigue. So, so I, love I love hypertonic and I want those minerals. So, uh, but, but just, just take, take that in mind. And most of the time, you know, stop the isotonic 
and then use the hypertonic for your athletes and low blood pressure. Patients. These are the glass vials. Again, plastic is not okay. Patients have brought in all kinds of mineral supplements to me in plastic, as well as in glass, clay, and mineral formulas from Utah and all that, and oxygen formulas and all that. Believe me, in my testing, they just don't test. You know, when you, when you do energetic testing, it's so nice because you test over and over and over again. It keeps saying, I'm sorry, this is your life company. It's just not testing. You feel so bad being a doctor. No, right? No, that doesn't test well. No, that doesn't test well. No. But it's the truth because if you test cleanly, toxic materials will cause stress. Um, so. The uh, yeah, glass, glass vials, vials, I'm so, so happy, happy that they're in glass, glass vials. vials. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, when you throw the glass vials away, are those put in the trash or are they put in the recycling? That's, That's a good, good question. question. And, and what, what about, about post-it notes? Is those paper? paper? I always want a recyclable seminar. What, what is recyclable? I recycle my glass vials yeah, and the glass, glass and plastic, plastic container. container. Yeah. yeah, I know. I always wonder about that. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah. yeah. The question is, does it help with iodine deficiency? It helps with, it helps with all deficiency. Again, I'm getting, getting you know, extremely uh, holistic in my old age, and I just don't find extra iodine a really good idea for a long period of time. It is a halogen, just like bromine, you know, just like fluorine. So, uh, I, I especially, especially treat the, the, the thyroid, you know, I try, you know, I try to, to treat other areas, areas like the adrenals, etc. and leave the scratch a little butterfly organ uh, to, to re-regulate on its own. own. So, so yes, yes, this, this would, would be excellent, excellent for thyroid. thyroid. Um, and, and less strong, and less disturbing in the iodine. Okay, okay. Conclusions. conclusions. I hope I, I save you guys a lot of money. Because you want to read labels for toxic excipients. And, and uh, you know, you, you may go, go home and want to throw away a lot of the products in your cover. Uh, uh, consider the source of the minerals. From, from, are they from, from drug companies? companies? Lots, Lots of these minerals and vitamins that we, that the, the, the natural uh, nutritional companies get, they're repackaging them, but where do they come from? They come from China. They come from Hoffman and Roche, New Jersey. A lot of these, even active ingredients. So consider the source of the minerals and the nutrients. Do they come from drug companies? Or do they come from natural phytoplankton blooms that have held up for over a century as having a good nutritional mineral support? And then there's, there's the website, the original ketone.com. The other company does a test as well. And it's heated, so that's not okay. Okay, okay so, so this, this is a little, little quote, not in your notes, sorry. This is by Emily Conrad. She developed the continuum movement, and in, that's, that's a movement where it's breath, sound, and movement to access the, you know, our deeper states and to feel our fluid state. So basically, uh, she talks about the fluidity, that fluidity is health. Anatomy is circumstantial. It is dependent upon the organization of fluid within any given moment. Our structure is designed to change as intrinsic fluid mobility becomes increasingly more or less alive. The degree of fluidity we embody affects how much information and nourishment is available to us. In a more fluid state, information flows more readily through the matrix tissue, through the extracellular fluid. Communication occurs between cells, different areas of the body, and the larger electromagnetic field. May Wan Ho, who has done tons of research on the matrix tissue, the electro, electro uh, cellular fluid, talks about the great Robert Becker. You know, Robert Becker is dead now, but what a great, uh, he was an uh, orthopedic doctor, and uh, uh, she don't usually think about arthropods getting into all this amazing information about the body, electric, et cetera, and all the amazing research he had on the uh, electromagnetic field. And May Wan Ho, she is finding nowadays that our extracellular fluid, our matrix tissue in our body, in health, is the same uh, is it in the same electromagnetic field actually creates our electromagnetic field. So if we have a healthy matrix tissue, we have a healthy electromagnetic field. It's like there's no difference from the external and the internal. 
So we have a couple of minutes. Why don't we have somebody come up? Hmm, I need a glass cup. Nobody has anybody have a clean glass cup. Anybody have a glass to drink in You you, you got, got a clean glass, glass Toby? Toby? Well, you, you want to come, come up? up? Yeah. Oh, she, oh, she, is, is that, that a clean glass? glass? Oh. Oh, oh, you, you, you want to come, come up? up? Okay. So, so do you, you have, have any health problems? problems? <laughs> oh, sure, I do. <laughs> okay. okay. I just, I just wanted, wanted to demonstrate, demonstrate how to take, take the product. So, so go, go ahead and stand, stand up. up. Uh, I have low blood pressure. You have low blood, blood pressure? pressure? Uh, John, John, would you put, put that the, um, chair in the middle, middle of the floor, floor for me and have her sit down? Yeah, we're right. Just in case. No, no thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. So, let's, let's have, have you away from, from that electrical, electrical cord, though. The... Okay. So. so. Yeah, yeah, just stand, stand in the face. face. That's, That's right. 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 Let's, Let's have, have you move over so you don't get blinded. blinded. Okay, okay, so let's, let's just check, check and go a little see. bit more, just for the camera. Oh, a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Just so there you go. Okay. Okay. okay, so, so let's, let's check. Gotcha, yeah. <laughs> let's check her arm leg test. test. So, so elbow straight. I mean, elbow relaxed. I'm sorry, elbow straight. Okay, okay, so, so the, the arm length test, test is a way of testing the fluidity of the body, the matrix tissue, the extracellular, extracellular fluid, the state of health of it. So, we simply measure uh, in and just, just dead weight, weight just super dead weight. weight. So, so we measure the length of the arm, arms, just like leg length, length, arm length, she's left short arm. arm. We, we do, do it again, again. dead weight. weight. Yeah. We're all used, used to handling things. things. We, we do, do it again. again. She's, She's even. even. See, See those thumbs? See, watch, watch her. her. Let's, Let's do, do it again. again. She's, She's left short arm. See that? that? This, this is, is called, called oscillation. oscillation. This, this is, is not healthy, healthy biological oscillation, oscillation of the cells in a healthy state. state. This is disturbing oscillation. oscillation. Very, Very common presentation. presentation. Her body is trying to find normal, trying to find homeostasis, and she can't. Okay? Very common that you see this. So something's wrong. Let's have you stand up here. Let's just test elbow straight and 30 degrees like that. I'm going to push in. You use this. So elbow straight, you go up and out. Hold tight. Okay. okay, so, so that's, that's her super spinatus muscle, relates to her brain, she's, she's already getting, getting tired from all this lecturing, and it relates to many different other areas, areas but it's a common problem, problem with cortex, cortex issues. issues. I'm, I'm going to push, push down, down and in. Okay, so, so she is weak, so let's, let's get, get your glass. glass. So, so the, the question is, at first ask her, do you have blood pressure issues? She's, She's always, always low, low like, like me. So, so, and, and you have significant anxiety. anxiety. I don't think so. <laughs> we, we all do. do. <laughs> okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but normal. Normal. Okay. All, right, all right, so, so have, have a seat. seat. So, so my testing, testing I always test the patient. The patient. I, just I just make sure that they don't have high blood pressure, pressure significant anxiety, anxiety first. Would she rather have, have the hypertonic, put that on our energy field? Can we test the energy field? Of course. It's a complete correlation to our... Matrix, matrix tissue. tissue. Now, now let this is right dead, dead way. way. Watch, Watch your thumb, thumb links, links again. again. Even. So, so this, this is not a straight, straight arm test. test. This, this is measured with fluidity. fluidity. So, so I, I reach that fascial rubber, rubber stop. stop. She's even. And she's even. even. So, so she, she likes, likes the hypertonic. hypertonic. Now, the, now, the reason, reason I'm, I'm demonstrating, demonstrating this is because, guess, guess what? what? Often, Often people like both. both. They both test well. So, so we, we put, put on, on the isotonic. isotonic. She, she likes it. it. Or at least she's, she's even. even. She, she remains, remains even. even. She, she remains, remains even. even. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, so in, in that, that case, case, what I'll do is... However, However you, you do, do it, it some of y'all use K27, sometimes you use modes, you right-handed. 
So, so I'll have, have to put in priority mode, hold that the whole time, time okay? So, so hold, hold that priority mode, and we'll put on the hypertonic again. So, so anyway, anyway you, you have, have figuring out what somebody wants, she remains even. even. So, so see what, what I'm doing? I'm going up, dead away. away. I'm hitting a fascial rubber stopping, stopping point. point, not, not like, like a hard muscle concrete stopping point. point. This, this is a fascial stop. stop. She, she remains even. She remains even. even. I'll check, check the isotonic. See, I'm, I'm filtering her with, with this priority mode. mode. So, so I'm already making her more picky. And look, look. She's, she's gone, gone back, back to isolation because I'm saying. But what, what would you really like? like? And she'd, she'd rather have the hypertonic. She's like me, low blood, blood pressure, so have, have a seat right there, there stay right there. there. And uh, so, so, the way you take it, it is you get a little rubber, rubber thing and in each little uh, box. And of course, you know, you get 30, 30, 30 boxes in the big box. This is more economical for the patient. patient. And, and then, then you, you snap, snap off one end, end just like, like you do when you're injecting, injecting right? right? Snap, snap off one end, end. And then, then you put that end over the glass and snap off the other end. end and it and goes right into the glass. glass. So you so don't you have, have to worry about, about any glass shards getting into your water. So hold that in your mouth, mouth a few seconds. Can you go right into the mouth? The, the Europeans, Europeans go right, right into the mouth. mouth. They, they don't, don't worry about, about a glass. They, they just snap, snap one off. And and so do so the New Yorkers. So, so, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> New Yorkers and Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 like, I like, to like to put it in a glass, glass and I'll put, put a little more clean water in and take some enzymes or something and get every little bit. And it's like... Yeah. yeah, and, and then, like, like I said, said it's a sinus issue, you see there's, there's still a few drops here. here. You, you can put, put it here like a snuff box, box remember when we, we used to all snort snuff, snuff, right? <laughs> and, and then just, just you know, snort it up. Don't, don't remember that in the 1800s? We were around, around it, didn't I? Okay, so here we go. She's ingested. Yeah. All right. So we test the reflex armly test again. I pull gently. I hit that, that rubber, rubber bone stop. stop. She's, She's even. even. Is she oscillating anymore? I have to do, do it several times. times. She's even. And she, she remains even. even. So, so go ahead and stand, stand up, Carol. And, and then we'll check the supraspinatus muscle. muscle. I'm, I'm going to push, push it down in. in. You resist. Arm Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Super, super, super strong. strong. <laughs> really strong. Hold tight. tight. Incredibly strong. So, so thank, thank you, Carol. Good job. Okay, okay, so, so for, for more information, information like, like I said, uh, the uh, key tone, tone is in my new revised, revised book. Revised book. Come, Come to, to author, author night tonight, tonight from, from 6 to 8, eight all right? 6 to 8? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you so much. much. Is this a fun conference? Oh, okay, great. Okay. Uh, remember, uh, remember when, when I started, started this morning, morning I said that we have limited, limited attendance for a number of the IABB activities. activities. We're, We're looking for the active participants, participants, the ones who really want to be there. there. And, and the, the Huggins, Huggins Protocol, Protocol training, training and